Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, we're from the data platform team at Bloomberg. Uh, so the topic of our discussion today is leveraging dynamic bags for data ingestion at Bloomberg. Uh, my name is Yvonne, and I've been at Bloomberg for four years. Hi, everyone. My name is Gabby, and I've been at Bloomberg for over a year. So before we get started, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, Bloomberg, Bloomberg is a financial technology company founded in 1981. So our main product is the Bloomberg Terminal, uh, which is a software that delivers a diverse array of information, news, and analytics to more than 350,000 subscribers in 170 countries. So you can think of the terminal as a huge real-time information aggregator that lets our subscribers take action related to their business and investment decisions. Uh, so the Bloomberg Terminal is used by financial professionals uh, around the globe, ranging from those who work in investment banks and hedge funds to governments, regulators, and national and central banks. Basically, anyone who's interested in the global capital markets. What differentiates us from a lot of tech companies is that data is our product. Uh, the Bloomberg Terminal is a trusted source for financial data such as pricing, trade volumes, and valuations for traditional financial instruments, such as stocks, different types of bonds, commodities, futures, currencies, uh, mortgages, and many more. Uh, for example, the mortgage securities are built on traditional data sets, such as loan level data, historic principal and interest repayment amounts, projected future repayments, and more. Our subscribers from banks, hedge funds, etc., use this information to make key investment decisions. Now here you can see some snippets from the Bloomberg Terminal. So this screen is an example of company information about United Airlines' stock. And here's a graphic of the US Consumer Price Index to track inflation. Uh, so on top of the traditional financial data, uh, we also collect and distribute alternative data to supplement decision making. Uh, and these examples are pharmaceutical drug pricing and sales, uh, airline flight totals and jet fuel consumption, marine traffic, port waiting duration, vessel details, uh, historic carbon emission estimates by the company, and even credit and debit card analytics and foot traffic data. So we call these alternative because the contents can't always be neatly categorized into a financial domain. And many of these are actually ingested using data pipelines that use airflow uh, which is the type of data that our team is responsible for. Uh, so here are two more snippets from the Bloomberg Terminal on alternative data. Uh, so on the left, uh, the graph displays a total prescription count for a specific drug, and the right side displays the weekly demand forecast for jet fuel and the number of scheduled flights for the next six months. So as you can see, neither of these are related to a specific financial instrument However, this supplemental knowledge can supplement uh, investment decisions. So yeah, one of the key problems we face at Bloomberg is that it's expensive and time consuming to maintain custom pipelines for diverse data sets in different domains. Our team specifically deals with this problem as it relates to alternative data sets. Before our team integrated Airflow, we were maintaining custom pipelines that were more difficult to maintain and debug as it was not user configuration driven. The bottleneck of that process was that it was expensive and time consuming to maintain custom pipelines for these diverse data sets with different domains. This is because as opposed to traditional financial data sets, the delivery and structure of alternative data sets is much more variable and is unique to each data vendor and industry. Engineers who are responsible for reliable and timely delivery of data to the terminal often lack domain knowledge about the data sets and how to model, transform, and aggregate raw data into client insight. On the other hand, the domain experts who, who do possess uh, knowledge on how to model the data lack the technical tools to maintain production data pipeline. So the solution that we've created is a classic configuration driven ETL platform that leverages Apache Airflow and dynamic data. At the high level, the raw data is dropped from a third-party vendor. It will then go into a, a business logic transformation engine 
from where Airflow will then do the loading process. Airflow will load the data into a relational database management system like Postgre. Then that data will be made available in the terminal for those for those of our clients who are interested in that data. This is all configurable by the Bloomberg's data analysts every step of the way. Our talk will focus on how we utilize Airflow's dynamic DAG to help us create these dynamic pipelines. So uh, Airflow is our orchestrator for data ingestion into the relational database. So it can be served within the Bloomberg terminal. Uh, the user-defined configurations, which are made by the analysts, are basically translated into dynamic DAGs, which determine which tasks are to be performed based on configurations, as well as the sequence of tasks that occur when new data load comes in. Uh, the dynamic DAGs then compute the snapshot data based on point-in-time loads, load the new snapshot into a persistent storage, and perform any additional success and failure actions. Uh, this automation basically exposes customizable functionality without an engineer's involvement. So why not simple DAGs? Uh, why do we need uh, dynamic DAGs? So as a reminder, especially for those of you who are new to Airflow, uh, DAGs or directed acyclic graphs is a collection of all the tasks that you want to run organized in a way that reflects the relationships uh, and dependencies. We need dynamic DAGs because we have a large variety of constraints that each generate a distinct pipeline. Using simple DAGs means that we would have to create each of these permutations in advance, essentially copying each DAG definition, definition across with just slight modifications. Uh, this is obviously not ideal since it wastes time and duplicates code. Engineering resources to be utilized much better. And if something changes, we would then need to change every single DAG definition, which is cumbersome. And with so many different variations, this will undoubtedly introduce bugs. And plus, migrating to Airflow would be much more difficult without the flexibility that dynamic DAGs offer. So, how are dynamic DAGs created? Our system consists of tables and views, all which have relationships. A table is a dump of data. However, new data periodically comes in as frequently as every day to every few weeks or month. This means that data are very, uh, tables are very dynamic in nature and are constantly changing. A view is a predefined SQL, SQL query that can combine or aggregate data from a single table or even multiple tables. What clients see are these different views that are created. An analyst can have two tables that have a relationship. They can create a view containing data from both tables to combine necessary information for clients. So, for example, we have a beautiful main table and a beautiful sales table. We want to show the number of sales per vehicle, so we will want the name of the vehicle and the number of sales for it. We will create a tree of view querying that information from those two tables, shown here using a join. Now, this, is, this example is a simple view. But there are way more complex views that can see many joins and aggregations. So, these tables and views also have configurations associated with them, which are created by the analyst. Tables have a configuration called a merge set. As mentioned before, tables have new data being added constantly. Merge set is a configuration that determines whether new data coming in replaces or adds to the existing set. For example, complete refresh performs the order, meaning that all old keys are wiped out and replaced with the new key. Latest key performs the latter, meaning that only keys that exist in the new data will be updated. A views configuration can also define whether it's materialized or not. So materialized views are views for which the result is stored on a disk so that the subsequent calls are much quicker than having to recompute uh, it on every call. This is particularly useful for views that have large number of columns, which are expensive to keep as a normal view. So, on top of the merge type configuration we introduced, there are many others that will determine how the dynamic data are created. For tables, this includes the file format of the incoming data, like CSV, Parquet, JSON, more, storage locations, um, merge type and additional success and failure actions, all of which can be customized. These actions could be email notifications, 
sending a message to a consumer producer pipe, generation of internal issue tickets, and etc. etc. For view, they can be material, meaning generated data being audited. We can also choose the compute engine such as Geo to upload larger compute tasks to designated engine. Also, any additional success and failure action similar to you. Uh, so basically, Airfall calls a service that fetches the graph information and matches the analyst configs uh, with the relevant operators in the library. And based on what they configure, Airflow dynamically generates a unique pipeline that mirrors the user configuration. Uh, each config has a different building block uh, created by us engineers. There's a library of custom operators that range from simple to complex. So for databases, we have loads, unloads, merges, drops on failure, vacuum, and materialized view refresh. For storage, we have running to S3 and invalidating Redis hash. Compute, we have distributed unloads and custom Python scripts and notifications, such as writing to the Kafka pipe, email, or raising a ticket. So the result is a dynamic DAG of subtasks and dependencies that mirrors the UI. Uh, these building blocks essentially allow Airflow to interface with many external systems while creating custom pipelines. Uh, in our example, most of our data lives in Postgres clusters, which Airflow interacts with. Uh, on top of that, we also have Trino operator blocks, as well as those that talk to Bloomberg's uh, internal microservices. Uh, so let me demonstrate what it looks like when Airflow maps configurations from a UI tool into a dynamic bag. Uh, let's say we have a simple pipeline that consists of a single table and a single view that is not materialized. Uh, Airflow will pick up the right building blocks uh, to create the load steps, including loading the data, performing the correct merges, backing up snapshots to S3, setting out messages, and performing vacuum operators. So here's an example of a simple bag in our Airflow UI. Uh, we can create one as simple as this one with just a few steps. Uh, now suppose we want to add some complexity by making the view materialize and changing the merge to the latest key instead of complete refresh. Uh, Airflow Dynamic DAGs will pick that up and replace the merge block with one that corresponds to the latest key and add the additional blocks that are related with materialized view, such as the refresh operator. Uh, the user also wants to create internal issue tickets when the view refresh fails. There's a new building block that will only get that will only be triggered if it fails. Similarly, if users want additional actions when view refresh is successful, they can choose to send a message to, say, a Kafka pipeline. Now, this is particularly useful in our case uh, as we have a process that uh, generates an alert whenever our weekly drunk data set prices change. This gets picked up by the automated news team, and a news article is published immediately to notify clients of the changes that occurred. And similarly, if you have multiple tables that feed into the same view, Airflow's dynamic DAGs will create two parallel table operators that both feed into the same materialized view refresh operator. Um, and the materialized view refresh, refresh operator uh, will then wait until both tables are updated before, uh, before performing the refresh. So this helps us save resources. And here's an example of a more complex DAG in the Airflow UI. It can have a large number of steps and dependencies, and shown here. So, as all of our data ingestion rely on the building block, testing becomes extremely important. We have a suite of basic unit tests for each of those building blocks. We also have an array of integration tests, which are called test DAG, that can cover the different variants of dynamic DAG as much as possible. As for system tests, Users can test out features and pipeline. They will test out the majority of client-facing ingestions on dev before promoting them to the system. All of these test bags also run in every environment we have in order to catch any environment-specific issue. Since we have many dynamic bags, we want to make sure everything runs smoothly and quickly. For example, we, when we noticed that our dynamic bag was spinning the database too often, 
we implemented a Redis patch to cache these bags for later use. Another issue we discovered was that dynamic DAG generation took a long time. We implemented some of Airflow's best practices, like moving all calls to Airflow variables within the functions that require them, require them, and converting top level Python imports to local imports inside functions. We also keep track of the performance using built in Airflow metrics to connect to dashboards like the schedule of heartbeat. You can find all these best practices in the Airflow documentation. Uh, so as of today, uh, we support 1,600 custom pipelines that are built using dynamic DAGs and 700 client-facing data sets. So we support 200 plus internal users from 11 different product teams that process up to 10,000 weekly uh, file ingestions. So this simply would not be possible with our old infrastructure. And this concludes our talk. Uh, any questions?